And uh, what we're going to do is try to do these things um, every so often, maybe once a month or so. And uh, if you want to join, uh, you can come and ask questions about OnBase. My name is Brian Hafferkamp, and I'm the uh, designer, the creator of OnBase Baseball. And what OnBase is is a, a relatively simple game. Kind of takes us back to <clears throat> back to the old uh, dice rolling uh, baseball type games. Uh, all of the results, the outcomes are right on the cards themselves. And so the game plays very quickly. And uh, one of the unique features is that it's built on sabermetrics. And so a lot of uh, sabermetric mm, values uh, or the things um, that are important in sabermetrics and breaking down baseball through data, uh, that's actually the underlying uh, baseline system for which the outcomes come. Uh, so if you have any questions, <clears throat> uh, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, you can also leave them if you're seeing this uh, at a later date. You can leave it uh, in the comment section. I'll get back to them. Uh, I'll also leave a uh, also leave a link to the um, the place where you can download the demo teams. Uh, and I just wanted to to use this forum as, as an opportunity to answer any questions that you have about gameplay or the way that the cards are made or <clears throat> any design choices that have been made and give some updates on the game as well and share a couple things uh, the new cards so these are going to be the cards that are released and also uh, I wanted to talk through a new sort of resource that I'm making for um, <clears throat> solo replayers who want to replay a whole season but you don't want to have to play <laughs> all the games necessarily so uh, I'm gonna uh, create a chart uh, that includes a one roll uh, system where you roll to find the winner and that also is based upon uh, Bill, some of Bill James work uh, if you're familiar with him uh, from many many years ago decades ago and uh, that's to find head-to-head -head matchups and uh, Saber.org did an experiment using his method uh, for doing that. It's called the Log5 method. And um, what it did is, is created a chart, basically a, a matrix, uh, where you can pit two teams against each other, and then it would give you realistic uh, odds or uh, <laughs> basically what's the percentage that this team will beat this team. So. Uh, it's uh, pretty cool, and uh, just basically converted those odds into uh, d20 dice rolls. So I'll show you that uh, in just a few minutes as well. No one in the chat so far. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see if anyone jumps in here. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanted to show was the... Uh, well, let me just give an update. I'll just do that at the beginning. <laughs> and I hate it when people save the good stuff to the end. So um, the update, the ETA, still opening day. I know we're, uh, I don't know, what are we, maybe 10 days or so uh, from opening day. Still hoping to have all of the, uh, all the teams done by then. Don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, initially, I was going to release the game in uh, lots of different types of bundles. I'm still thinking about how to release the game as far as, you know, you can purchase it. Uh, well, obviously, if you're going to be able to purchase the full season. It's going to be around $20. It's going to be a PDF. Uh, it's going to have 900 players, so uh, 30 players per team. And times 30 teams is 900 players. So you'll uh, be able to play most of the players who have played uh, at least the majority of the games. Uh, I'm also going to include some blanks. So there will be uh, four hitter blanks and four pitcher blanks, which you can print them out as you need to and basically fill those in uh, with players that if you want to be you know accurate to who played in the games or you want to make sure that every player is represented, you, know, you just print those out and write them in. Uh, you can look up their stats or no. <clears throat> and uh, you can use the on-base uh, chart, or you can find a player uh, who is a similar caliber and just use their outcomes and just write their outcomes right on the, on the card so that you can replay it. Um, I have another video showing you how to go and get the data uh, to find the weighted runs above average and to find the fifth or Sierra numbers 
four different pitchers. So, excuse me, um, that's going to be available to you whenever you purchase a team. Uh, it'll be team specific, so it actually has the team, the city name, and the year. Uh, so if you buy multiple years, multiple sets, then uh, you'll have those cards. They'll be delineated uh, as to which card goes with which year. And uh, so that's going to be <clears throat> sort of what we're we're talking about there. Let me show you. Um, So let me just show you uh, what the cards might look like. Here's the 2019 Yankees, and this is their sort of frontline starters. And these are set out uh, using um, Sierra lowest to highest. So there's two sheets of uh, pitchers and two sheets of batters, and then the blanks. So these are this is the first sheet of pitchers. Um, one of the things that I've done based on feedback is is pulled everything in together. So now it should be easier to cut. So just one cut, two cut, three cuts, four cuts, and then trim the outside. So it uh, should be a little bit easier maybe to uh, trim up the cards so that you don't have to, there used to be space in between each of the cards and in between each row. Uh, so maybe this will make things a little bit easier to cut. <clears throat> and uh, some of the other additions to the cards. Um, we have the team name up here or the uh, team colors, so whatever the team colors, uh, team's primary color, that's going to be up here, so you'll be able to easily delineate between, you know, two teams when you're playing. Some teams might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, if you're playing two dark blue teams, it might be harder to, to notice. Uh, but we have the player's name. Uh, is he a relief pitcher? Um, you can see that starting pitchers here are in red, and that also was a, a design from the community. Uh, as you're flipping through the cards, if you either to set the set the starting pitchers and the relief pitchers apart from one another more easily, or if you just have all your pitchers in a big stack, it'll be easier to, to flip through and see who's the starting pitcher and who's a reliever. Uh, also made the you know the handedness of the pitcher a little bit more pronounced, um, just so it's easier again to sort of flip through, find a lefty or put your lefties all together or something like that. Uh, have their number, their stamina. So these things have sort of moved around a little bit. They used to be over here, and now they're here. It makes a little more sense and, and sort of sets these things off. <clears throat> all of the stats are still here. They're a little bit, the stats themselves are a little bit larger, uh, whereas the, the headings are a little smaller and bold. So hopefully that just uh, sets off these statistics a little bit more. You can see here, uh, each team is going to be uh, shown here through between the stats and the, the outcomes. Um, New York Yankees 2019, that way you have the team color, you have the year uh, that these stats are applied, and uh, that should help keep the cards together a little bit more. Um, just trying to utilize uh, the screen space or the uh, card space a little bit better um, based on feedback from people who've been playing it. So if you've been playing it and demoing and giving some feedback uh, about the game or what could be better, I really appreciate that. It's been really, really helpful. Uh, I'm pretty new to this uh, to this hobby, to this, this game. Only the cards and dice version. I mean, I've been playing uh, text-based baseball games for, or sports games, really, uh, since the... I don't know, a long time ago, <laughs> since the late 90s probably. And so I love them, and I enjoy arcade baseball games too, but uh, there's just something about playing the GM and being able to just see the numbers. You know, maybe I'm more of a numbers geek than I think sometimes, uh, but I think that we all are, right? Whenever we, when we get to, uh, we get to playing uh, these sports games, so... Um, then down here you have the outcomes. So down in this section you can see all the outcomes. Uh, the outcome on the left is before the pitcher reaches the stamina. So while he goes through batters one through six uh, for Chad Green. <clears throat> and then once he gets past his stamina, however you want to play that, so I play it a different kind of way where once the pitcher reaches the stamina, if he comes out the next inning, then I use the red. Uh, but you can play it if he reaches his sixth batter, 
he goes right into the red. Uh, this is based off, the stamina is based off of uh, how many batters the pitcher faced that year as opposed to how many games he got into. So his batter's face divided by 54 uh, gives us roughly six. I, I bump it up a little bit. I give him like uh, whatever that number is plus one. <laughs> so uh, just to, to be a little bit more realistic because any relief pitcher can throw to six batters. It's not really, it's not really about, you know, he's going to start wearing out after six batters. But this is just his normal usage. So maybe usage is better than stamina. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but after he reaches his stamina, however you play that, then you would use the red, uh, the red outcome. So if he rolls an 11, a 1-1, one, one, uh, before his stamina, it's going to be a K. But if he rolls a 1-1 one, one after he reaches his stamina, and you've decided he's going into his sort of post-stamina numbers, then it would be a walk instead. So uh, you can see here where he would give up a single, now he's going to give up a double. So there is some penalty for keeping uh, pitchers in the game. Uh, it's not always a crazy, terrible penalty. You know, a, a strikeout to a walk is, is not a terrible penalty over here, but uh, a strikeout to a home run is a very different sort of thing. So uh, looking at those things, but his home runs per nine inning is almost two. So he's given up eight homers in 40 innings. That's uh, not great. You know, that's not a good number there. Um, but obviously here, you know, he's not going to be giving up a home run uh, to much of anybody. That's the role of this, <laughs> role of this Chapman. Um, and looking at Chapman, Chapman shows uh, some basic simple splits. So in these uh, new cards, I have put some basic simple splits. And what these splits are, if you see... Uh, any outcomes that are in parentheses, then what you want to do is if he's facing, so Chapman is a left handed pitcher, if he's facing a left handed batter, then you want to use these splits. If he's facing a right handed batter, then it's nothing here. Uh, if he's facing a right handed batter, then you would just use these normal outcomes over here. Same thing. Uh, if there's a 2 2, then it's going to be a double. So that's just. Uh, it, it's the outcome that you would use. If it's a 4-5 uh, against a left-hander, it becomes a single. Against a right-hander, you use whatever the blank outcome is for this particular one. Uh, some batters have, or some pitchers have splits. It's the same thing over here. Some pitchers have splits uh, that have an outcome for a right-handed hitter and then an outcome for a left-handed hitter. So you would use for a right-handed hitter against this left-handed pitcher you would use the right-handed one in the parentheses only if he's facing a lefty so that helps you to bring in uh, left-handed specialists uh, Zach Britton uh, pitched really well against lefties I mean yeah against left-handed batters he gave up no home runs against left-handed batters so I tried to reflect that a little bit here uh, these are all you know numbers where you're going to be able to get a home run uh, from a batter card and so he actually against lefties doesn't doesn't give up uh, home run. Same thing here for Chapman. I don't think he gave up a home run against lefties, so that's reflected here as well. And um, no other special things necessarily uh, for the pitcher cards. So let's move over to uh, batter cards. Let me check. Check. Do we have any, any questions or anything yet? <clears throat> So we have um, we have the batter cards here. This is this is from the uh, the first sheet of batter cards. Uh, so you can see if we look at, at these two DJ LeMayhew and Aaron Judge. Uh, so same thing. We have the players um, sort of profile up here at the top in the team colors, uh, what positions they played. So LeMayhew basically play him all over the infield because he played all over the infield uh, that year. Um, right-handed batter, right-handed thrower, so bats and throws. Uh, you see that where we got a lot of right-handers. and So same thing, left, right, or uh, bats and throws. Um, 
His number batting is the weighted runs above average number. So this is going to be, oh sorry, uh, computer's working hard for the, uh, the video. Um, so this is going to be his, basically the weighted runs above average. Now this is, um, it's called batting, and it stands for batting runs. And batting runs on fan graphs are actually uh, weighted. They're weighted, weighted runs above average. So they're weighted for the ballpark and they're weighted for the era. So it's uh, it takes into account where the batter plays, um, where their batter plays his games, and where he, or at least his home games. And um, the same thing goes for Sierra. Uh, so when we use Sierra for pitchers or FIP for pitchers, uh, I believe that's weighted for. Um, their ballpark as well. Uh, they have a defensive number up here and then the player speed here. So the defensive number and the speed numbers come into play uh, whenever you need to make decisions about base running uh, or you need to do error checks. Um, same thing, we bumped up the, the size of the, of the statistics a little bit uh, just to sort of bring them <clears throat> to a good place where you can see them easily. Same thing with the team name here, and then all the outcomes are here. And a um, couple of changes, if, you've, if you haven't downloaded the cards recently, um, I've gone ahead and made these um, sort of conditional uh, outcomes a little bit more clear. So for 5-6, uh, um, for LeMayhew, then it's either going to be a walk or it's going to be a hit by pitch. So if the D9 is a, a 1, then it's a hit by pitch. If it's a, anything else, a 2 through 9, then it's going to be a walk. Um, same thing over here. If there's a double play situation and he rolls a 2-4, then you should turn the double play. Uh, if there's no double play situation, then it would be a strikeout. So runner on third base and he rolls a 2-4, that's going to be a strikeout. Uh, if a runner's on first base or first and second, then it's going to be a double play. And depending on, you know, I usually play it depending on where the ball's hit. If it's hit to third base, maybe you just go 5-4-3. If it's hit to second, maybe you go 4-6-3, and then the runner advances. So just thinking about what's a good baseball play, in, uh, or at least what's common. Uh, but if you want to add some complexity, you can base it off the the bat, the the runner's speed who's on base um, you can base it off the fielder and the runner's speed so there's there's some different metrics here that you can use with defense and speed uh, to actually affect some of the different outcomes on the field um, <clears throat> if you run into a plus sign that's that's an error check if you run into an ADV uh, that's auto advance so on this one it would be a ground out and it would just be a uh, play to first base all the runners advance. That's how you should play it. Same thing with fly outs. Uh, it's a fly ball that's caught, but all the runners advance. So uh, good chance for um, sort of auto scoring uh, fly balls here and things like that where you don't even have to worry about making a play to the plate. It's just the runner's going to score on the sack fly. Uh, here we have some splits. So this is uh, Aaron Judge. Judge uh, well, he crushed the ball anyway. Um, and only 378 at bats. He had 27 home runs. But <clears throat> uh, he also hit extremely well against left handed pitching. So his outcomes here are reflective of that. So if he's facing a right handed pitcher, uh, then at a 3 5, he's going to strike out. If he's facing a left handed pitcher, then at a 3 5, he's going to draw a walk. Same thing here. So he hits home runs at a pace of um, like a thousand plus OPS kind of pace whenever he is against left-handed pitching. So where normally he might fly out against a right-hander, that ball is going to go out of the park uh, if he's facing left-handed pitching. So when there's a left-hander on the mound, uh, you probably want to make sure that Judge is in the game. And I don't know anybody else have that. Nobody else on this page. I really tried to make sure that uh, it was when it was very clearly obvious that there was an advantage against left-handed pitching. 
So even if the player bats left-handed, if he has a 140, you know, weighted runs created plus, um, and then he's got a, a 72 against right-handers, you know, he has an advantage against left-handers, especially for that year. Maybe not for his career, but for that year. So I wanted to reflect that year and what was happening uh, in in the cards themselves. So even if it's a left-hander against left-handers, some weird lefties hit lefties really well. It was kind of strange. Uh, so you'll see some of those things. It's not only right-handers against left-handed pitching. Same thing happens occasionally with right-handed pitchers as well. Funny enough. <clears throat> okay, and then the last part of the cards is the blanks. So here are the blanks, and you can see that it's essentially just uh, it's just the batter card with all the information taken out. Same thing with the pitcher. It's just the pitcher card uh, with all of the information removed. So you can fill in the name and the handedness and, and you know what type of uh, pitcher that the person is. Uh, and so you can just fill in this, uh, fill in these blanks uh, for yourself. Just write them in, and you feel free to print out as many of these as you need. Uh, you can hand write them. You can, you know, do whatever you need to do uh, to make them uh, look well. But this is essentially the weighted runs against, <clears throat> weighted runs above average. Sorry, uh, the defensive number and then the speed number. That way, you would have those players to add uh, throughout the year. Um, still no questions so far. <clears throat> okay. And, um, all right. So that is the, uh, batter cards and the pitcher cards. So these will be the new cards that we're, uh, that we're going to push out. And maybe the last thing that I wanted to talk about, um, was a new chart that I'm making. So here's the chart, uh, here. So you can see full of lots of numbers. And what this is is sort of a, a win-loss chart um, that helps you to determine uh, a victory. So if you're doing a replay between two teams, uh, you don't want to, or you're doing a season replay, but you don't want to play all the teams. You just want to play uh, your team. So if you just want to play your team, then one of the things that you can do is um, simply roll to see who's going to win those other games. But the issue becomes how do you how do you, how do you determine the winner uh, based on a roll? Um, and this was actually a problem uh, that was looked at on uh, saber.org sabr.org. And I found this article <clears throat> written uh, in 2014, and it was uh, a thought experiment to see, can we determine accurately uh, the probability of one team beating another team? So uh, this was exactly what I was looking for. And essentially, um, they went through uh, this win probability function and uh, started using a bunch of advanced math that that's not really my thing. I'm more in the applied area. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so based on, on those, um, based on those formulas that came out with this table, um, this table here, and this table represents the predicted probability of victory in head to head matchups between, uh, two different quality teams. So you can see here that there's the team winning percentage and then the opponent winning percentage. So basically you read it from left. Uh, it's a matrix that you read across to whatever the opponent is. And then that would be your win percentage. So a team with the, let's say a 500 win percentage playing another team with the 500 win percentage, the possibility of winning is a toss up. It's 50, 50, but if they're playing a team that has a 600 winning percentage, now, the possibility of winning is only 40%. So you have 40% chance here. This team has a 60% chance. Uh, so if you go down to 600 and they're playing a 500 team, you can see that here their winning percentage is 60%. So 
So <clears throat> this was sort of the original take on it. Uh, they went through and they show you the correlation of uh, winning percentages and basically this is reflected here. Like you'll see the striations if you sort of pick it apart. Um, <clears throat> and then they go through a lot of historic data uh, to get to that table and more complex stuff. And then uh, table seven. Table seven is sort of the final product. And it represents the probability of victory uh, with the revised win probability function. So um, it, it basically sort of brings everything, every team back to the middle a little bit uh, as opposed to making it quite so dramatic, um, which, you know, creates a, an element of uh, dynamic maybe or what if right it creates some dynamism uh, in the results so <clears throat> uh, when we look at this table this is the table that my particular chart is based on so essentially what I did is I went through and I I did a, a d20 so that's a pretty common uh, dies I'm sorry a die uh, that most people are gonna have and some games require it so I figured most people are gonna have a d20 uh, if you don't, you can easily go online and find a dice roller. That's what I've done. Um, <clears throat> but essentially what I've done here, sorry, my mouse keeps sticking here. Uh, what I've done is I've taken these percentages and then I've converted them into a d20 roll. So uh, 1 divided by 20 is uh, 0.5. So for every roll, it's a half. I mean, it's 5%. Um, so what we do is, I'm sorry, it's, it's at 0 0.05. Uh, so what we do is we convert these percentages, or we convert these to percentage. So 592 becomes 59.2%. Okay, so that's essentially how I'm looking at it. And then I've come over here and I've taken my D20 and I've converted these, uh, this chart here, into this chart. So basically we have the same uh, team winning percentages up here. This would be the team winning percentage down the left. And this is gonna be your opponent's winning percentage up here. So let's say, and I've been playing the home team down the left side, the away team on the top side. And this might give an advantage to the home team, I'm not sure. If it does, even better because there is sort of a home team advantage, or there should be for most, most teams. So let's say uh, I've, been, uh, I've been playing the NL East a lot <laughs> with the Braves, uh, just sort of going through, and, and you can see my, you can see what I've done here. Well, this isn't it. So I've gone through, and I've basically just played out all of Atlanta's uh, schedule uh, three times in a row here, and you can see the different outcomes for Atlanta. So when they're on the road, let's say they're at the Phillies, uh, the Phillies were 500 that year, 2019, and then they're playing the Braves, who were 599. That was their final winning percentage. So essentially, 600. So you're going to have to kind of round, because these are, I don't know, every 0.20, uh, they go up. And so you have an 8, so you have a 600 uh, winning percentage team against a 500 winning percentage team. Um, and when you roll anything from eight to one is going to be a win for the Phillies. Anything from a nine to a 20 is going to be a win for the Braves. And so that comes out roughly to uh, the 60, 40 winning percentage that we saw here. So we saw a 500 team against a 600 team is there's a 40% chance, 41% chance uh, that the Phillies will win. But in, if we do the inverse and we play them against a, uh, a 500 win team, uh, so you have the 600 here, we we'll go across until we get to the 500 up here. And when we cross them in the matrix, they come across at 592, which is basically 60% winning percentage. So we don't have uh, such fine control with the D20. Uh, if I was thinking if we did a, a D100, 
then we would be able to do 1% increases and maybe, maybe even fine tune it more. But uh, you'd have to probably do that uh, either building a dice roller or using some online dice roller to do a D100, uh, which is its own sort of strange thing, but would give you to you know a lot of a possibility and probability, uh, and would get you basically to these numbers themselves. So <clears throat> that uh, that's the dice roller, and essentially it's just a matrix, and you just start with the. Uh, I've been using the home team here, and then you cross reference the home team with the win percentage of the away team and wherever those two meet uh, it's this number or lower so if you have uh, the same if it was the Braves or the Phillies of the Braves you would start here at the 600 and you would go to 500 and then any number 12 and lower would be a win for the Braves be a win for the home team uh, so that's essentially how it's going so you you know only from a 13 to a 20 is it possible for uh, for the Phillies to win that game? So <clears throat> theoretically, you have the same chance of rolling any number uh, as long as the die is not loaded. And so uh, you just increase the probability of one team winning or losing by taking away or adding uh, the possible you know values that could lead to a win. Um, now I did a little bit of role research here. And you can see I did three different seasons, and I have all of the uh, of all the games that were played, and who they played, and whether it was a home or a road team. So the first season, uh, the Braves went 107 and 55. Now their um, their record in 2019 was actually 97 and 65. So something to keep in mind. The second time I rolled through, they went 86 and 76. Their Pythagorean number, by the way, is 91 wins. Uh, so they were about six wins better than their projected wins uh, based on runs scored and runs um, given up. And then the third time through uh, was somewhere in between. So then they went 101 and 61. I did a three-year average of these, and then they came out to 98 and 64, which is one run or one win better uh, than their actual win. And then the swing for those um, between their actual wins and the highest and lowest numbers was uh, plus 10 so 97 wins and plus 10 is 107 wins and then minus 11 on the bottom side so 86 plus 11 would get you to 97 so there's a little bit of uh, dynamism here there's a little bit of swing <clears throat> uh, which may or may not be good but it would lead to, if you're trying to just reproduce uh, the statistics from the year, uh, that might not be great for you. But if you're open to allowing um, a little bit more variance into the season replay that you're doing, uh, that might be uh, pretty cool for you to just, you know, it's going to get you in the ballpark. It's going to get you close, but it's not going to be the exact number. Uh, it's not based on exact numbers anyway. And I think that this swing would probably uh, get a little bit closer. The variance would get a little bit closer to zero if you used a D100 as opposed to a D20 because then you could sort of fine tune it a little bit more. Uh, so that's a, a project that I've been working on and just sort of going through the uh, schedule here to see playing the actual games from 2019 uh, to see. And you can see that uh, five of the eight games um, turned out differently in the role than they did in real life. Uh, four of the opening day games out of 14 uh, were different than the actual results. And so, you know, I just played through the season and just to see, you know, the role, uh, how different did the teams turn out, their wins and losses, based on rolling as opposed to based on their real life uh, wins and losses. And, you know, this chart, it does not take into account uh, anything about the teams. It only takes into account their win percentages. So there are teams that uh, beat the Braves when they shouldn't have. There are teams that the Braves beat that they shouldn't have, like here. They dropped two to Colorado, but each other year, <laughs> each other role, you know, they took two from Colorado. 
So the same thing, uh, like playing Kansas City. They played them somewhere down here at the bottom. So two wins, and then they went one and two, and then they won two. So uh, there were different times at which, uh, you know, maybe they shouldn't have. They dropped three to Pittsburgh somewhere along the way, um, which is possible. You know, they lost two or three here. They won all three, and then they, they dropped two or three again. Uh, so it just depends on the roll of the dice, really. And so if you're open to that sort of, um, uh, if you're open, <laughs> open to not, not doing a straight simulation, uh, it would give you this sort of dynamic universe that even if you play the 2019 season over and over again, uh, and that was the only season that you had, um, you would actually be able to have sort of a different season every time that you're playing these games. So. Uh, that that is one uh, concept trying to um, trying to give something new uh, for a solo replayer uh, to be able to go through um, <clears throat> to go through and see how can we play this year uh, even though I don't want to play every single every single game and some people will just only play the the team's games, but some people want to see, you know, is my team in the pennant race? Um, maybe I play the last month of the season, and so we start wherever they are on September 1st, and then we start playing through the games, or I want to play my team, but I don't want to play all the teams. So uh, just trying to think about how can we get a one roll result uh, to quickly sort of move through the day's games where I don't have to play them. Uh, this could be a whole game in and of itself although I would if I did that I would want to have a little bit more fine-tuning about teams playing against each other and just to see you know because when Atlanta plays Miami you know there's there are you know you could go 500 against Miami you could you know theoretically lose 16 of 21 or whatever against a team that you're better than but the reality is against most teams, the better team is going to win. So uh, that's just sort of how it is. And the better team has has better players. They have better pitching. They have better uh, hitters. And those things play out typically on the field, which is how the good teams get good and the bad teams get bad. So a lot of that is not reflected here, you know. Um, Although they're surprisingly, you know, they they take two of three against Cincinnati. They won uh, three of three here, you know, two of three at Colorado. They lost two out of three, and then they won two out of three. So averaging, you know, what is like sixty percent winning percentage against against Colorado. That's probably normal uh, for the Braves um, at home against Colorado, and so. Uh, I don't think that it veers too far off uh, the path. You know, they're playing the Dodgers here, and they would drop two of three. They drop two of three. They drop two of three. That's probably, you know, what's going to happen whenever the Braves play the Dodgers in L.A. They're probably going to drop two out of three. Uh, so some of these things are not too far off, although they did drop three to Arizona here. But, you know, maybe they were a little tired on that West Coast trip. Uh, playing again, you know, go from Miami to LA to Arizona. That's a rough trip. Uh, so hopefully that's a, a really good. So hopefully that's a really good uh, uh, resource. I'm going to include that uh, that you can download for free, and uh, maybe I'll just for fun do a D D100 as well, and then figure out the win percentages for a D100, and then you'll have a little bit more fine tuning uh, with this. You could you could do a D20 if you just want to to do a real roll, or you could do uh, a D100. Um, well, uh, that's that's what I've been working on. Uh, let's see, do we have any, no chats, uh, no questions, but uh, I do appreciate uh, the people who have joined, and uh, let's see. I do appreciate the people who have joined, and I just want to make sure that uh, keep in contact and connection. Uh, the very final thing that I wanted to talk about was I will release the game 
uh, for purchase so that you can purchase the game. You can just purchase um, the season. You're going to get the quick start guide. You're going to get all the teams. Um, I'll throw in this <clears throat> uh, this chart for wins and losses of uh, replay teams that you don't want to play. Uh, what else is in there? You'll have access to the dice roller uh, for free. So you'll be able to just use the online dice roller application uh, to play the game, which is how I play. Uh, but you can also use, um, some people are playing with two D6s uh, because the D9 is really kind of hard to find. Some people are substituting a D10 for the D9 and then just, if it comes up 10, they re-roll uh, until they get a one through nine number. And so there's lots of different ways uh, that people are playing, which brings me to um, somebody said, why is this game different? You know, what makes it different than the others? My personal background is as a web developer. And so <clears throat> the way the web development community has grown in my lifetime, just since the web started, was when I started learning, um, is through open source and sharing. And so I know that that has been a big part of the community of the cards and dice, but it hasn't been as big a part of the creation process of cards and dice. So uh, we're going to try to do something new and just put that out there. And this is going to be more of an open source take on creating a cards and dice game for baseball, at least. And I'm going to let you leverage your experience and leverage uh, the 40 years or 60 years or 20 years or five years of experience playing lots of different games in order to take sort of this uh, blank canvas and then expand it and make it into um, a really beautiful, sort of almost semi-personalized game. So on base, if you just play it like it is, uh, as a base game is great. It's fast. It's easy to pick up. Um, most people say it's just, it's a lot of fun because it's not a lot of thinking. You're just sort of rolling and playing the game and you kind of get immersed in the baseball game and that's what I wanted. I want the actual game to sort of get out of the way so that you're not thinking more about how do I make sure I'm doing the right thing and following the rules of the game and you just sort of miss the baseball game itself. So I wanted the game to get out of the way and I want the baseball game. I want the management of your team uh, to be more important uh, because that's the part that I've loved about playing uh, text-based sims and things like that is that the, the game sort of gets out of the way and you're not necessarily worried about how do I manipulate everything or find everything. It's just, let me play the game. You know, let me get in and make the decisions and, and make the UI and the controls real simple. So all of the UI and the controls of this game are really simple. You know, you roll the dice, check the outcomes, move on with life. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, it's basically that easy. Um, but if you wanted to bring your expertise, like let's say, especially base running and fielding, are kind of uh, wide open for you to make a lot of decisions on. I love baseball. I played baseball in my life. Um, I follow baseball very closely. It's, uh, you know, Pitchers and catchers reporting is uh, is really high up there on my list of good days of the year uh, because I know that it's coming. And opening day, you know, I still I love to just you know sort of watch the games and, and I follow my team and get on the other side of the world. So uh, it's it's really I love it. I love the game. I love to learn more about it, and uh, I enjoy sort of following the game along with the manager and seeing what he's doing or. Uh, getting the inside scoop on the game, that type of thing. <clears throat> so for me, the management, the general management of the teams, uh, that's a really cool part about being able to do these uh, text-based games. And I wanted to <clears throat> make sure that that part was, uh, was a part of any game that I created. This game actually started um, <clears throat> as an online game. Um, in fact, I, I created the digital game first and still is a work in progress because I made a lot of changes to the cards and dice version that need to go back into uh, the digital game. But um, basically created a, an online interface that you could keep score offline, uh, but also 
play the game you know, with a lot more advanced sort of algorithm type stuff uh, in the game than you could do with cards and dice. So I created that and uh, on base comes from that name. So it's an acronym that stands for the online uh, baseball advanced stats engine. And my idea originally was to just create a game engine that people could then uh, make into their own. You could use the game engine uh, because it's based on war, uh, which has since changed, but uh, it was based on war, and because it was based on wins above re replacement, then you could sort of mix and match players throughout history. Uh, it brought sort of a safer metric uh, idea to the digital baseball game so that you can mix and match players. <clears throat> you can match up a team of Babe Ruth against a team of Lou Gehrig and see who would win. Uh, and, and the outcomes were based off of player war. Um, or you could take players from different eras, and because war evens them out across history, uh, you can, you know, a four war player in 1927 is going to be equal to or similar to a four war player in 2020. So because those are equaled out across history, you could actually put them on the field together digitally and play a game. And uh, come out with relatively equal results. So <clears throat> that was the original idea, um, and then you could fill in your teams and, and do that however you wanted to. And, uh, so on base sort of came out of that. It doesn't make as much sense with the cards and dice version, but it, they're meant to sort of go, you know, hand in hand. Because when I was creating the engine for on base, um, I I was doing research to figure out like how can I get to the outcomes okay on this game without creating some sort of like super advanced algorithm and so I started coming across dice baseball from back in the day and doing some research you know a hundred years ago uh, type of games when it first started uh, pre Atla, pre Stratomatic uh, and where did those games come from so I was doing that dice uh, rolling history and uh, decided on uh, what I was going to use. I was going to use sort of random dice rolls in order to come out with the outcomes for this digital game, web-based game. And um, <clears throat> as I got finished with the game and sort of got into a happy place, I thought, you know, I'm already using dice rolls. And I started coming across more cards and dice videos from Tabletop Baseball Plus and, and others. And I was like, oh, there's a whole, like, there's a whole thing here about the cards. What if I converted this into a tabletop game? So I started doing a little bit of research with the tabletop baseball games, uh, downloaded just some free things, read a lot of game manuals of how they were handling different things. And uh, as I got into it, I thought, man, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's a lot of work to play a game. Uh, a little more work than I'm ready uh, to do. Um, with the chart lookups and all the different things, it's just, uh, you know, uh, call me a millennial, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, it was just a little bit more work than I was ready to put into that, so um, so I started to think, well, I could create my own game, like a stripped-down, simplified version of these games, but it would also be sort of an expanded version of what I was originally doing my research on, which was um, sort of homebrew dice games, you know, where kids would play with two dice and, you know, figure out the winner. Um, so could I do a more advanced version of that? And then can I do a sort of a stripped down version of some of these other cards and dice games and how would that go about? And originally the, the online, the engine, game engine chart was the one chart you needed. So you just roll, look on the chart, do the connections, but then someone suggested, uh, why don't you just put those onto the cards? That way you don't have to look up, um, you don't have to do the lookups on the chart and stuff like that, it'll just be right there on the cards. And so I tried it out, excuse me, I tried it out and uh, it's worked beautifully. Uh, because now you you can use the game engine chart if if you don't have the carded players So if you want to do a classic team or something like that or a team of players that you just randomly choose from history to put together on a team <clears throat> Or you can even make up fictional players and then use the chart for that um, Someone was trying to do uh, 
independent league or you know you could do korean baseball league like there's all types of you know the japanese league you could do all types of leagues as long as there is the metric to be able to get that so weighted runs above average is a pretty common metric these days so if you can get to that uh, metric uh, you could also still use war if you wanted to even if you have the cards you could still use war because i'll put it on there for the batter cards at least and then uh, you could use FIB, ERA, whatever you want to use. Uh, it's really versatile. So basically what it's done is, is set four groups of players who are equally brought together by their statistics. Um, and they have similar attributes about them. And you can use the chart to sort of group those players and then get outcomes for roles based upon their stats. So that's uh, the essential. Uh, baseline and you can convert that or change that or manipulate that uh, in lots of different ways and, and I'm cool with that it's it's no skin off my teeth or anything but um, you can play it as is you can modify it you can share your modifications with other people and say this is how I'm doing it or this is what I'm bringing in from this game and then this game and then adding it sort of to the baseline game uh, that's happening a lot as well and so it's just a little bit of a background on the game and I want it to be more creative and open source. So if you want me to just tell you all the all the outcomes and specifically this guy goes here and this guy goes here and you know, those are things that you're gonna have to bring to the game. And maybe some people don't like that and I, I totally respect that. Like you wanna sit down and you want the game to play out in front of you. But this is more you playing the game and being in the manager's seat or being <clears throat> being um, a real part of the game as opposed to just sitting back and watching the simulation that wasn't what i wanted to play uh, i didn't like those games whenever i tried them out and so i'm just trying to create something a little bit new and different now all that to say um that's good history that's good background for the game and hopefully uh, it gets you excited about the game. I think if you play it, um, I think if you play it that you'll you'll feel like, okay, here's a place where I could add this base running idea. Here's a place where I could add, um, you know, this sort of metric for, for taking extra bases or whatever it is, or I can pull this in from this game and just add this onto this because I already know the mechanism for, for that. Um, I try to give you real data, not opinion. Uh, so when you are looking at the defense of the player on the player card, their defensive rating is not me rating it. Uh, this is actually a sabermetric. Um, it's, it's based on the actual stats from the player. Uh, now they're looking at it differently. They're pulling in different uh, things to create the formula that spits out the number at the end but <clears throat> it's based upon you know real numbers about <laughs> chances and errors and range and all of those things so um, this is uh, and it's weighted for you know different ballparks and uh, so I'm really trying to give metrics to help you the one thing that's a little bit off maybe is speed speed is sort of an old thing that Bill James did a long time ago that People don't really use anymore but I like it because it includes base stealing and caught stealing and it includes base running all at the same time and so it's sort of a, a quick snapshot of how fast how good a base runner is this player and what it did was it gave me one singular number instead of a group of numbers um, that I could base base running plays off of so which is which was really what i was looking for you know at some point the game has to work right you have to be able to work with the dice so i can't just make a bunch of calculations uh, or ask you to make a bunch of calculations in order to get to a number that then you can roll dice for so uh, that's a uh, that's one part of it so speed defense and then the weighted uh, runs above average is one of the best things that we can use <clears throat> as far as um, being able to see how good a player is compared to the average. So weighted runs created is also a good one. Uh, weighted runs created plus 
is a great number. Uh, I don't have the chart set for that, but you could easily set the chart for that as well. And then uh, one of the things that I want to do <clears throat> that may be a little bit different to and people might not be, gamers might not be quite as keen on it, I don't know. I will release the game to be purchased. And so you can purchase the game as a PDF just like you normally uh, would purchase any game. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Bill. Uh, Bill said the having the cards together is going to make it easier to cut. So I, I appreciate that. And thank you for the welcome. Uh, you welcome to the chat. So thank, thank you for the welcome to the chat. Um, so one of the things I want to do, uh, I don't know if you know about Patreon, <clears throat> but patreon.com is a place where people who create things uh, can gather a community of followers. Um, we can all become a part of a community together. And uh, through that vehicle, you can actually support people who create things. So whether it's a musician or an artist or a writer or uh, whoever it is, uh, you have the opportunity to sort of crowdsource um, your community funding. And so I'm also going to open up the Patreon community uh, for us to be able to gather together. And it would be online or on-base baseball players playing together, uh, talking about things, doing these sort of monthly get-togethers. Um, where maybe it'll be a little bit more like a Google Meetup, uh, a little more intimate with people can join on video and things like that. But um, I actually, it's not easy uh, to keep doing these things uh, and to keep creating cards and things like that. So <clears throat> uh, only on sales alone, maybe there's room for a couple of different um, large companies like Stratomatic or Appa. It's really hard to break into, you know, that sort of mass market, but I don't really need um, that type of money that they make in order to, to make a living doing this or turning this into uh, a business or a game that can keep going forward. So, um, so I'm going to create a, a, a community and we'll, we'll see how that goes as far as being able to supplement uh, the time that I put into it and supplement my own income. So just giving me a chance to do this uh, would be really awesome um, because it does take quite a bit of time uh, to make the tweaks to the cards, uh, to make the cards themselves, uh, to put the different pieces together. <clears throat> and you can see just from today uh, that I'm, I'm thinking about all the different pieces of gameplay and, and maybe, you know, how can we, how do people want to play? Um, and then creating a community of gamers around that and uh, allowing me a little bit of freedom to be able to create the game while still, you know, still putting the game into the hands of other people. If you didn't want to be a part of the community, you can just buy the game and, and move on. But if you, if you did want to be a part of the community, part of shaping and changing the game over the years, because I'm not... <clears throat> I don't know that it's in its final stages right now. So uh, we don't even have a whole year of people playing it. So um, maybe more things will come. Maybe more ideas will come. And that's sort of the open source mindset where we're, it's changing, it's evolving. It's becoming more um, <clears throat> more of what it could be or what it should be. Uh, Maybe just exchange, you have a place to exchange modifications that people are doing uh, is really cool. Uh, I, I love to hear and see on the forums like how people are, are changing it, what are they using, how are they <clears throat> manipulating um, the game a little bit to make it more sophisticated or complicated. Uh, maybe not complicated, but complex. And so I love, I love hearing about how the community is doing that. Just want to sort of a place where people can gather together to do that, uh, one thing patrons will be able to, or patrons will be able to, um, get early access to new seasons. Uh, there will be different, you know, sort of tiers and levels of support uh, for the game. Um, maybe some swag <laughs> that we could give out, or some merch, and uh, 
So just thinking through some of the different ways uh, to take this in a, a new direction, a different direction. Maybe we can take uh, the cards and dice games into a new direction, into a different place, more maybe modernize them a little bit, not just creating an online game, which is, you know, it's important to be online, but how can we create a community around on base? And maybe you don't care about that, you just want to buy the game, that, that's totally cool with me, or you just want to try it out, but uh, I think once you play it, you'll see that there's a lot of really fun on that or not, but uh, hopefully not. We're still going. <clears throat> um, okay, so we're back online with the chat. So we had uh, Bill, uh, Bill join us on the chat, and uh, today we went through several different things. So the new card designs, uh, that's going to be the official sort of release card designs. If you have any um, thoughts or ideas, uh, they would go into a redesign for uh, the next year. And then um, we also have. Uh, the announcement of the the win loss chart. So, uh, if you're doing a, a replay, uh, you would have a way to determine the winners, determine the outcomes of the games that you don't want to play quickly, uh, just with one ra dice roll, and sort of play the rest of the day. Next day, you play your team, and then you can play through all different teams um, to get realistic uh, data based. Um, win probabilities uh, so that was based on bill james's win probability work that he had done uh, a while back and then the final thing was uh about release date so still looking for opening date of this year don't know if that's going to happen or not uh, my car production has slowed down a little bit in the last couple of weeks uh, but i'm still shooting for it i'm at about 10 to 12 uh, teams, so maybe about a third of the way through. Uh, I've had to totally revamp the card design process and the card designs. So I had a lot of teams done, <clears throat> but converting them over to the new cards and the new card designs has been a little bit slower. Uh, so that's just slowing down things uh, a little bit, but it, it could be a week or two into the season before we can release it for purchase. You will be able to purchase it through uh, PayPal and like I said I'll, I'll get the Patreon community up and going too so that's another way uh, to be able to support uh, me as a creator support the game <clears throat> uh, staying alive and, and going on uh, farther into more years and uh, there'll be some goodies uh, for doing that so my thought is you can purchase the game or you can be a part of the community and then you're going to get the game you know based on which level of support that you provide <coughs> excuse me and uh that way those you wouldn't have to buy the game and support uh, the game at the same time so you could sort of choose the more of a subscription model or uh you could you could just purchase it outright if you don't want to be a part of the community so um hopefully uh this has been a good and transparent video this is you know, maybe not something normal in the gaming industry, or at least the baseball gaming industry, for, for the designer to come on and be quite so transparent. But uh, I know that it's really cool to see behind the scenes and to see how things are made. And uh, I, I really want to invite you into the process. Like, I want to invite gamers into the process of making on base a really, a really great game. Um, there's no magic. There's no anything else here. <laughs> Uh, there's not a lot of opinion in the cards. Um, it's based on the stats, and so I really want to keep it in that place uh, where I have to. I can remove the opinion out of the out of the game, so that the game can just sort of happen on the on the field without saying, uh, "I don't know about that guy." People are arguing about the ratings more than they're arguing about uh, baseball. So there's a lot to argue about in baseball, and we should keep the focus there and take it off of the game itself and into the game of baseball. So that's sort of, you know, my hope and, and my desire there. And, and I'd love for you to, to join along the ride. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and, and shut this down for today and uh, maybe next month or uh, at a release date, uh, we can have another 
have another one of these chats. Uh, thank you for Bill uh, for joining in. And for those who are going to be watching later, uh, thanks for checking it out and staying through. <clears throat> I'll leave the uh, the link to where you can download the game and download the uh, the demo teams. Uh, with the, they're not the newest cards, but the almost newest cards. <laughs> so these cards here are the newest ones, and uh, that was that came sort of right after I put the demo teams up. Uh, so you'll be able to. Uh, to check out those demo teams, do the gameplay, download the quick start guide. Uh, you can play the Marlins against the Mets, and uh, and just give the game a try. You know, get in and and it it doesn't take long to learn it, uh, and you'll just sort of you'll feel the rhythm of the game after a while. So um, I appreciate you watching, and 